Hello and thank you for watching another SSD test for the PS5 here on NAS Compares. Much like the other videos that we've done so far, these were tested during the beta phase of the software and although everyone now can take advantage of M2 SSDs on the PS5, it's worth highlighting that this recording was made during the beta phase of events. So there may be slight things in there that I refer to that aren't applicable now. All of the SSDs during the beta and the full SSD release work exactly the same. There's no difference in performance, but I did think it was important to highlight this fact before you start today's video. So let's start and run that intro. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another SSD test and we're going back to Sir Brent. We're going to the Sir Brent PCIe 4, the original Rocket. This is not the Rocket 4 Plus, just to be abundantly clear there, this is well, I would consider the second tier down from that. If we go into the storage manager here, you can see it's the Sabrent Rocket, not the Rocket 4 Plus. Very, very important. It's still a PCIe SSD. It can still achieve speeds of 5,000 megabytes per second, give or take, but it is not the high-end model. So, although this is the second testing of this drive here on the channel, technically the third, if you include that combination video we did a little while ago, um, this is one where we're going to be bench testing those same five games in this latest year. We've got one more round of tests for this, uh, for this particular SSD coming in the next week or so but for now let's make our way into the games that's right we're looking at Oddworld Subnautica in the ra in Rays of the Light I never get that name right Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Borderlands 3 so we're going to test these games all for different reasons that we'll talk about throughout the video before we go any further I should highlight I do recommend that you've checked out my other videos on this SSD prior to this because this is the next part in a series and there are bits that I'm not going to be covering here that I've covered previously, such as the PS5's internal benchmark and migrating that data over. Indeed, I've already migrated these games over. Look to the bottom right of the screen. So again, if you want to see a lot more about that process, do check out those videos and some of the speeds there. Also, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, you can see that we are running the beta software, beta 3.1. And currently in this beta version, you can use these SSD expansions. We're not sure when it's going to be fully released and maybe you're watching this and they've already um, activated that slot and therefore, you know, you can use any SSDs you like. But right now, if you are watching this and you don't have the beta, don't rush out and buy an SSD yet. Um, unless you're worried about scalpers and pricing and stock availability and you're somewhere where that's a problem. So let's load uh, Borderlands 3. 3, 2, 1. And for this video, we're looking at two things. In our first test, we're looking at the load time of Borderlands 3. So we're seeing how long it compares the internal SSD for when the game loads up all the way to the title screen. This game on the PS4 had a notoriously slow loading, but on PS5 is a great deal shorter. And we've definitely seen notable differences in load time between games. Now, as... Um, Claptrap reappears on the left. How much of him appears is a good sign. Now, that's how I've been gauging things in my head because I can only see the current recording. I can't see the PS5 recording there, but I am comparing them later on in a big, big, big face off. But now we're on to the title screen. We can move into our second test. So we click X and make our way into the Borderlands 3 main menu. From there, from continue, we're going to be loading into the game and comparing the load game into Pandora, same area, um, utilizing the internal SSD versus this Sabrent rocket drive. So let's go in in three, two, one. And we are in. Next thing we're gonna do is very quickly load into a vehicle. We want to be able to just try and push this, see if we can push in any low textures, see if we can get the game to have to force generate a bunch of assets unnecessarily, see if there's any clipping, any drops in frame rate, anything like that, as we make our way through the world as much as we can to try and push this SSD to work a little harder. But I'm not seeing anything really there of concern. For me, it's still running fine. Again, if anyone's not played Borderlands, I hate the vehicle control. 
genuinely despise it. Some of the worst I've ever seen. But for me, this is still running pretty darn sick. So that's the end of the Borderland testing. We can come out of that game and make our way into Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Again, I know these are quite repetitious. If you are watching all of these, you know, you know, God bless you, but at the same time, you're mad. This is about doing the same tests over and over, but for different SSDs. So there's going to be an element of repetition to this. So thanks for sticking on. And again, no one should be watching all of these. I appreciate when you do, but it's just going to be the same games over and over again. Five games per SSD every week, coming up to a total of 20 games. Come on, guys. We've all got stuff to do. But thank you so much for watching nonetheless. And if this is helping you, choose the right SSD, that's fantastic. This is exactly what it's for, to try and get the right SSD for your PS5 and indeed my PS5 by the time this software comes out of beta. So we're nearly out of the title screen here. We're gonna be loading into the world. We're gonna do two different things here, but let's load into the game first. One, two, three. And what we're doing here is we are um, loading into the game to see how long it takes and then we're going to load into a combat mission uh, to get the game to push in some new assets. You may have noticed the loading on this game for a game that released, you know, for the PS4 and has been remastered for PS5. Those are some long load times, right? It is crazy how long some of this loading time is for this game. I think um, more than anything, I'm really surprised that... Um, the load hasn't been um, at least improved in a number of ways. But here we are. We are in the world here. We can go ahead and do a little bit of activity there. And then kind of go from there and then we'll head back to that main area while I'm getting absolutely dicked by this security droid. But for now, I think that's fine. Yep, I'd, I'd say that's fine by me. We're going to do the same thing as before. We're just going to allow this to end and then we're going to make our way back to that same circle. Sorry about the clicks from the controller. I'm recording in a quite close-knit environment here. And from here, we can then start making our way back to that original circle there. Let's get a bit of light. And then from there, we can head on to the meditation bit. There's been no problem so far. Um, in this testing, I've got to say normally by now some of the weaker SSDs have started to show a uh, few of their blips We saw some T poses in other games and some drops in frame rate. Nothing so far uh, For the rocket 4 NVMe Again, not the rocket plus remember that guys the rocket plus is a more expensive and also higher performing SSD overall so do bear that in mind um, Not to get them confused. So let's go in and three two one And again, this is just a brief training mission. It just allows the game to have to recycle a bunch of assets and introduce some random AI in kind of a, a, a less organic way. And that's really what we're trying to do here to try and get the game to have to be forced to do some stuff. Man, you can really hear the controller there. Sorry about that, guys. Thank you. But for now, yep, I'm saying that's fine. We'll just double check that it loads in all these other characters with no T-poses. But no, that seems fine to me. It seems to be absolutely fine. It would help if I used auto-aim, but no, we're not going to be doing that. I'm getting absolutely torched there. But I think that's fine for now. That's good for me. Let's make our way into the next game. The next game, of course, is in Rays of the Light. Again, did I get that name right? Yes, I did that time. Let's load in. An indie title. Uh, we've gone for this game because as beautiful as it is, and you know, it has a very interesting, compelling story that I'm genuinely looking forward to playing through more fully outside of these tests. Um, the loading you generally find on a lot more indie titles you find that the, the loading management and asset management is generally not quite as smooth as AAA titles where they've got lots of techniques and um, engines for that sort of thing. So we're going to be doing two tests here. One that's loading into the game 
uh, from uh, uh, an outside save and another to an inside save with very different one to test uh, assets um, and resource management another one for textures so the first one's going to be assets and resource so we're going to go in on three two one and we're in the game that was lovely and fast let's make our way outside of this dark depressing area we've got all of the assets there and again I'm not going to say this is like the most challenging graphical game it's got a lot of last of us vibes about it but Again, we've got the assets there, lots of the big structures as well. It's very much a, a no loading screen game as well. Beyond the first loading screen, you're supposed to never see a loading screen in this whole game. So a lot of that background loading and lots of the kind of asset destroying and reintroduction. And then you've got heavy light um, and shadow stuff going on inside this game. And lots of the texture development being forced in and out quite quickly. A way for the game to kind of conserve resources to keep the frame rate up there's also a controlled movement this is me running but still nonetheless there's a lot of assets here for this indie game to keep an eye on so for now let's carry on wandering around making our way back uh, to a big old building here in the distance as we look around see that there's no asset pot no problems yep not seeing anything there to be overly concerned with and I think for now, I would say that's working for me. I'm not seeing anything that will give me a concern. I think this SSD is not running tippity-toppity. And for now, I think we can make our way into the next save. So the next save is an internal segment. And we're looking at um, frame rate here. And we are looking at textures. This bit is surprisingly challenging. And a couple of SSDs have kind of dropped by the wayside at this point due to the textures and the frame rate. But for now, let's go in at 3, 2, one and here we are we are in this part of the game we can go ahead and explore this area here again we can look at the textures make sure nothing's loading in on a low texture for now it's still running fine we're not seeing any drop things seem absolutely fine make our way along again a lot of what we saw before we saw some problems throughout but this seems to be running okay i think you can definitely tell when the game engine is trying to destroy assets or put the assets behind you in low res um, as you turn around but nothing really that i can have a go at the ssd for here the controllers vibrate and this is a turbulent scene of the game we can make our way through into this next bit i know the low light there and the 1080p compressed into the top of the screen there is affecting a little bit of playback it's a little pixelated for you guys don't worry that's not the ssd that's just a recording but the light effects still seem absolutely great the textures seem great we can look at the tiles there nothing's really popping in and out negatively which is good to see and for me this is a pass for me on this ssd so let's make our way into our second to last game which is subnautica subnautica originally um well it was obviously a pc game but it was on the PS4, and this is an open world survival game. And in this game, there's a lot of asset management, a lot of textures as well. You always find all these open games, again, your Conans, um, uh, your Forest, your stuff like that. These are all ones that are going to be incredibly intense uh, to manage there all the time. So what we're going to do is go with a fresh creative mode. And from here, we're going to see how long it takes to load the world. And then when we're in the world, we're going to do a quick double check for any kind of um, close-up texture problems and of course any long distance graphic popping so let's go three two one also great loading screen i've said it before i'll say it again i love a loading screen that tells me assets being loaded into the game it reminds me of the noughties and the 90s i love pc games that tell me what exactly is loading because then you can figure out where the problems are and that's really good when you're comparing these ssds to see which assets are causing it the hardest work are they small are they big where does it sit it's great and here we are in the game so for now let's go above ground make our way up there if i can actually get up there without um, just mucking around and here we are in the world so again mostly set in water it's a bit kevin costner for my liking but let's go in and explore this world a little bit we can 
there's the up and then there's the down but for now we can make our way into this world have a bit of an exploration and just kind of explore what we see around us now you may notice that the character is moving at different speeds compared with the internal ssd versus the top right that you're seeing there for the subrent but that's because i've used the momentum of going up into the water to go down to increase that speed so don't worry that's nothing to do with the ssd that's all to do with how i've approached this particular game session now what you may be noticing here is no you know all of the textures going on we're trying to move as fast as possible to try and force the game to have to load in new assets or to not swap out low res textures for high res textures but for me it's seemingly doing quite a good job it's you know it is keeping on top of things the ssd isn't feeling troubled by what we're doing uh, my character is not doing well apparently as i'm going way 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 too deep and it looks like it could be curtains for me shortly but for me personally i'm going to call this a success and i'm going to make our way into our last game which is odd world let's come out there before my character brown breads so let's carry on and we're going into odd world again it's a single save game scenario we're just loading into the game and then from there we're just going to go into an early portion of the game with lots of uh, kind of set pieces and lighting effects and we're just going to see how well it loads and how smoothly it runs so let's go three two one almost there and we are in let's carry on moving forward and there we go running at a nice decent frame rate as we move nice and fast not seeing any drop there despite kind of background assets unfortunately we don't have any kind of camera control as you would expect from these 2.5d platformers um but for now, that seems to be fine by me. There is a slight delay when I'm pressing the buttons because of my capture. So forgive me if timing jumps don't go well for me while I'm playing this. But ultimately, I'd say this is going very well. I think this is doing what I would expect if I was playing this game. And I wouldn't think there's any problems occurring with the SSD. Let's double back and go back into the previous area. Again, obviously this game is going to do a very good job of managing some of the background um, asset management as it's going to flick into low and high res. But nonetheless, going back and forth and forcing the game to have to kind of contend with some of these things in case it's tried to destroy these assets or try to get rid of them in an effort to conserve later, it's not really a problem. And for now, this does seem to be running absolutely fine for me. But... I'm going to wrap things up and start moving these games back onto the internal SSD as we summarise everything we've seen today. Let's go there. Let's move our games back. Move them over. And bosh. So, even though this SSD is arguably under the recommended minimum from PS5, it has to be said that it has run through all of our tests today faultlessly. Now, not all the SSDs that I've tested recently were able to do that. So, full credit to Sabrant and this SSD for maintaining the performance, the loading, the frame rate, and the textures throughout all of our tests. However, we don't know how solid Sony are going to be once the update for the firmware is out of beta and in full release. They could be very, very strict about that minimum 5,500 megabytes per second sequential read. And even though this SSD reported higher than that on the PlayStation's own uh, benchmark test for this SSD, I would still err on the side of caution on this one until the firmware is in full release and no longer in a beta or an alpha or any kind of state. Because although this may play games now, there's no guaranteeing that it's going to play games you know two three years down the line and you are buying an ssd long term so if you are considering this ssd maybe maybe hold off just for a second until the firmware update is full and then by then we'll do further testing on this drive we've still got some more showdowns and we've got another whole barrage of tests involving rocket league no man's sky and spider-man still to do so do stay tuned for that and it will include this ssd but 
Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, click like. It helps me understand what about these videos you like, and I do read the comments and take them on board. If you want to find out more about these guides or know when they're going to arrive, of course, click subscribe and click the notification bell. Take advantage of the links in the description where I go through all of the SSDs that I talk about in my videos and there is a ranking there of which is doing the best as well as links towards individual heat sinks that I recommend and do not get an SSD without a heat sink guys. Either get one that has a heat sink included or get yourself a heat sink. It's like 10, 20 dollars max and it will help you long term. Finally, take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's manned by me and Eddie the web guy. It is completely free. We don't do anything with your email. There's a donate button, use it if you want to, you don't have to. And we cover all kinds of data and network storage, from NAS to DAS to Thunderbolt, USB, just everything. So any kind of data storage solution you're looking for, big or small, home or business, use the free advice section. It's right there. It may take us a day or so to respond to you. We respond to every one of them, but we're two humans. It does take time. But other than that, I will see you next time.